Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be messing around with the new 55 R5 monobath. What's a monobath? It's pretty much just a one-step process to develop and fix your film, ready for scanning, and then you can print whatever you want. One of the advantages of a monobath is that you don't have all these different trays, all these different steps to get the film processed. You just have one step, pour it in, dump it out, put it under running water, let it dry, and you're good to go. So I know there's some videos on the R3 monobath, which looks really interesting. This should be an improvement, but we'll check it out and see what happened. What I did is I went out to the St. John's Bridge in Oregon, shot three rolls of film, two I bought brand new, one was expired black and white film, and I wanted to see how they all performed. I shot at the bridge with the Nikon F3 camera, one of my favorites, fully manual, great camera, fun to shoot. I didn't want to shoot just the bridge, so I also just stopped kind of a pedestrian walking around and asked him to stand in for a few shots. Thanks again, Sean. And so I got like a whole variety of stuff that we're gonna look at. So I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of getting the film set up, processing it, and then scanning it, and then kind of what the results look like, what the contrast is doing, what the grain looks like. It should be pretty interesting. I'm really excited about it just because it's a really easy process and I've seen some really cool results with it. All right, so let's go inside, get started, and see what happens. So these are the three rolls of film that I shot. The Kodak T-Max 400, the Kodak Black and White 400 CN, and the Ilford Delta 100. Some of my favorites, we'll see how they performed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these canisters. Pretty much you have a lid, and then this is what the 35 millimeter goes onto. Spools on here, then should be ready to go. Then goes back in here, goes in here, then put the chemical in there and we should be set. The thing is you gotta do all of this in a dark bag so that way you don't expose the film to any kind of light. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then once it's set, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the sink and get the chemical in. So I got the R5 in a bath to bring the temperature up to 75 degrees. Got a thermometer in there to kind of show me where we're at. Then as soon as we reach that, we can go ahead and dump it inside the cartridge with the 35 millimeter film. Okay, so now we're gonna slowly agitate it for the first minute of the six minutes that we're leaving it in the R5 solution. So now I'm letting it run over room temperature water for about five minutes as per the instructions on the bottle. And then after that, we can go ahead and get them out and hang dry them. Well, they're looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results. Now to scan them and start taking a look at them. Okay, so here's the final shots. There's really no editing done in post. This is all straight from the scan. Maybe just a little bit of adjustment to try and clean them up a little bit because I wasn't too careful when I scanned them, I think. And you can see some dust and some stuff all over them. But for the most part, I'm super happy with the results. I think I will definitely be using the R5 again and I just try to grab a series of close-up shots, different lighting situations, different textures, just to kind of see how the films perform. They all pretty much performed as I was expecting across the board, from the Kodak to the Ilford. I was happy with all of them. They worked really well, even the expired stuff. This one here, we got a little bit of a sun breaks, which made kind of a cool effect. And, you know, some of the grain was a little more than what I was expecting, but I think I like it. I'm not too unhappy with it. Some, uh, you know, a little bit of light leak, some streaking, and that might have had to do with how I handle the film and stuff. So I can't really say anything negative about the R5. I personally like a little more higher contrast. This is when Sean, when I kind of tracked him down and asked him to stand in for a few shots, just a pedestrian walking down the street. And he was uh, gracious enough to uh, sit in and let me do that. And I got a few shots of him. I wanted to see what that looked like as far as skin tone and on a person. So overall, I gotta say that I'm pretty happy with the developer. I'd probably use it again. It's kind of fun to be able to shoot something that day, go home, process it, scan it, and already start using the shots. And even some of the stuff in Photoshop that eliminates dust and scratches worked really well. Kind of made it slightly blurry, which I didn't like, but for the most part, it worked out well and I could go in and clean it up pretty nicely. But like I said, super happy with the R5. Definitely gonna be using it again.
final shot of just some sticking the camera into a tree, get some uh, cool foliage shots. But anyways, check us out next week.